Hunters nationwide and abroad. It's time to get Joe Break Studios. It's Dan and Doug. Check it out. Come on. So get hype. Get high prisms. Be hyped. This trademark. Is the hype. What is going down, everybody? The hype is back. Thanks for tuning in. And we're now on iTunes. Well, we were before, but we're back. So thanks for listening in your car or in, at the gym, wherever you listen to podcasts from. And thank, especially thanks for those that are tuning in live. So uh, we're going to talk about a lot of stuff in the hobby today. We're going to talk Prism Basketball, which came out last week. And it's just ridiculous right now. So we're going to go over that. We're going to talk a little Bowman Draft that's dropped today. We're going to talk about... Uh, uh, Shohei Otani again. We're going to talk about some NFL stuff. So it should be a pretty exciting ride. We're mojobreak.com. We do group breaks, case breaks. So check out our site for the latest in any type of card related product. We're doing breaks pretty much all day on YouTube and Ustream. And make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. So uh, we're in the middle of December and there's a lot of releases. We got Transcendent coming out next week. We've got Court Kings basketball today, Bowman Draft baseball today, uh, Preferred Football today, and we got some Elite Extradition tomorrow. C Red, what's going down, man? What's up, everybody? How do you? Uh, how are you? Are your thumbs relaxed from uh, Prism last week? Um, I felt like I didn't open up enough Prism. Yeah, can't get it. Can't get <laughs> enough. I'm still hungry. Dan, how's your thumbs feeling? Ah, it's the great winger. Um, pretty good. I uh, my camera angle, dude. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. you're a little I'm all right. I'm all head and no, tor- no torso today. <laughs> it um, looks like you're on a booster seat or something. I mean, <laughs> I what what the hell, man? I don't know. It was what, it was that, uh, it was hastily uh, put together today, but uh, well. You know, that's what happens for anybody who's wondering. I do have a torso. I'm not just all head. Um, I guess we're gonna have to go the next hour and 15 minutes doing it this way. Maybe you should just like, like I, I think you zoomed it in a little bit. The, I the, might angle, have. the angle's all funky. I don't, I don't know, but it, it's cool, man. Well, you I, were talking about not having a beard. I figured if I zoomed in a little bit, you'd have like more of a beard definition going on. Yeah, so. it, it's it's cool. I'm, I'll just. Uh, you do you. I'm gonna sc- scroll through and see my Uber rating. So make <laughs> some. How is that Uber rating treating you? I don't know, man. Some jerk gave me a four. I'm a four. I, I got a four star now. Nice. I well four point seven five. But somebody gave me a four star. That means I was a bad passenger. Can they comment? That would be hilarious if there's if Uber drivers could comment on what happened during the ride. No, there'd be some good ones. There would be some good ones. I might have some good ones. Pretty sure you may have a good one from last weekend. I, I might have. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where I was. Check my Made it home. Right now. Yeah, I got to check that out too. So, but uh, you know, the people that are listening on the podcast aren't bothered by your torso because they can't see it. No, yeah, no, no, don't worry about it. Can't see uh, your sitting situation. But uh, as you can see, we're on episode number twenty-five, and that is the greatest player of all times jersey on the screen, Barry Bonds. Uh, should be in the Hall of Fame. We'll have a debate on another show. I didn't leave enough time to get all fired up about Barry Bonds, but most of you guys know where I stand as a Giants fan. With Barry Bonds, but we'll jump right into uh, Prism Basketball. It's it's literally cocaine for collectors. It's uh, gone way up. I think uh, wholesale price is up to thirty five hundred dollars a box, which means retail prices or thirty five hundred dollars a case. Retail price. It it (laughs) really did go up, didn't it? Yeah. Um, That means retail prices are going to be closer to four thousand dollars a case, and it could still climb. It's insane. I mean. I can't even fathom the amount of cases that are made and it's going up. Usually supply outweighs demand, but there's a lot of supply and there's still a lot of demand. It's just crazy to me. So, I mean, what what do you what is your take on this whole craziness, Crad, of Prism Basketball 2017-2018? Man, the writing was on the wall since Silver Prisms blew up with 15-16. Uh, and the funny thing is that it took a long time for that to to happen, right? 15-16 dropped in December like it always does, actually. Prism usually drops in December. This year it dropped in November. Yeah. Um, but 
Once the Silver Prism rookie cards blew up, the writing was on the wall, 16, 17, it was already, last year was tough to get Prism, I, I must say, like, compared to any other year, and then this year, you know, same story. And, you know, with last year's rookie group, you only had technically, like, one guy to really chase. Benjamin yeah. Benjamin Simmons, and this year, it's 15 guys. It's crazy. <laughs> There's a guy popping up every day, I yeah. mean, depending on how their how their uh, games are being played. So that's yeah. important that it's during the season because this can, uh, you know, be like a stock market with this product. But for those of you who don't know, we've talked about it in older shows. And if you're just tuning in for the first time, the speculation on Prism Silver rookie cards was kind of a card spiracy. You know, see, I took conspiracy and made it card spiracy. That like these it. cards, uh, these Silver Prisms, which are not numbered, it's a rookie card that's not numbered. You know, originally Prism debuted 12-13 with Kyrie and AD, and everybody was going after golds and autos at that point. The Silver Prisms were an afterthought. They were going for, top guys were going for 7 to $10 maybe. Most people weren't even selling them. They were keeping them. And then all of a sudden, 14-15 with Wiggins, um, and then more importantly with Cat the next year, uh, there was a run preseason that saw a lot of silver prisms in the market start climbing two, three, four hundred dollars. So the conspiracy is, is that a group of guys, um, or, or, the or Illuminati, girls. the Illuminati, or girls, or girls, maybe a little bit of both. But uh, I think put, a, get, put together a card and Illuminati somehow. Cardlaminati. <laughs> Whoa. Cardlaminati. <laughs> Card Illuminati. Cardlaminati. 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 There you go. So they, they, um, the rumor, and once again, this is all alleged that they sent in a bunch of their, they, they, first off, they bought up as many silver prisms at like five to seven dollars that they could. Like every day they were buying it. And then what they did is they sent it into a, a, co a consigner like Probstein or like PWCC, some of the major eBay consigners, the people that sell cards on eBay for you. So they bid each other's cards up. One paid for them and everything like that. So it kind of exchanged hands. But what they were doing is they're creating demand. We don't go by Beckett value these days. We go by what it sells for on, on eBay. So these cards were now selling for $200, which made the basketball public aware, whoa, I got to get the silver prisms of the guys that I want. I'm, I'm Carl Anthony Towns collector. I don't have a silver prism of Towns. I need to get these. These are going up. I need to get them. And so there was, because Topps Chrome was the number one Kobe, the number one um, LeBron, that was the number one rookie card, there was kind of that void missing when Panini took the license and made an exclusive because there's no more upper deck cards. So, or there are no more tops uh, cards in that in that instance. So, they f people feel like there was an artificial demand created, and this year is when it really showed off the most. I think. What do you? I mean, what are your thoughts? Is that, does that make sense, or is is it just? It makes a lot of sense. Is it me. just? I mean, is it the rookie card that people want? Is, was it going to be there regardless of it's some like, artificial demand? I mean, it is. It is the tops chrome refractor. It's uh, it's the same thing. If it, it, if you get a not a Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant rookie card, you want the Topps Chrome refractor, yeah. right? A non non obviously the non auto stuff. Uh, the LeBron James, you want the Topps Chrome yep. refractor. Well, there is no Topps Chrome. There's there hasn't no been Chrome. for a long time. This is the closest thing. It actually has the same pretty much the same film on it. This is it. So you think these th guys maybe always, nudged there, nudged also, it into it? There was also the uh, when Optic came out. There was like, oh well, th is this gonna be the Topps Chrome rookie card you want? Yeah. Well, it's not. It's the Silver Prism. This, yes. That's the one you want. Um, Optic will be playing second fiddle, I guess. And what's, what's, well, what's funny is that for football market, Optic is actually above Prism. I feel like for football collectors, yeah, but I agree. Basketball is Prism. Well, let me ask you guys this: Where would you rank Optic and Select Basketball? Which ones ranked higher? It's still it's still prism select and then optic for basketball. So optic will be third yep. third fiddle then. Yep. Third fiddle. We can there be until a lot of fiddles they, until they can get those on card <laughs> autos in optic of basketball like they were and you know like for top when tops was doing it. Yeah. Until they can get on card autos with the rookies, it's it's gonna be third place. Sick still. fiddle. Sick fiddle. Sick fiddle. So Donovan Mitchell has been one of the ones that uh, since it released, his stuff has just gone insane, and rightfully so. <clears throat> you look at his last three games, I believe it was like 21, 31, and 41 in his last three is gonna, games. Is he going to make that? Is he going to come up short? Uh, I think he made it. Is he's he going to make it? Because it looks like he's coming up short. This dunking machine. <laughs> I know. I think he's still ascending, though, because yeah. he's so athletic. Uh, I don't what, know. What, what, I, see, I see two things happening here with Donovan Mitchell. One, um, he can like the way obviously he's a natural three point shooter. 
Um, he, he can go either the way of uh, maybe he's the next Curry. You know, he, he's, he lights it up from three-point. Or what I always, I always think about this when I see a rookie that's exploding, scores a lot of points. Obviously, you remember they're, they're saying 41 points on Friday. That's the most since any rookie since Blake Griffin back in 2011, right? Um, if you guys recall, there was a guy named Brandon Jennings mm-hmm. who scored 55 his rookie season. That's actually the record for rookies. And we all thought he was going to be the next great player, too, because of that. And, you know, I'm, what I'm saying is that don't get your hopes up too high. I can see him being a, a um, elite player, elite shooter in this league, but he can also go the way of Brandon Jennings where he'll be a serviceable guard for whatever team he's on. Yeah, I think most importantly here, too, is that he's he played two years in college. So he went to Louisville, played two years in college. So you, you compare him to some of the other guys, especially Lonzo, a um, l- little more seasoned. I mean, yeah, y- you can't jump from high school, then jump to college, and then jump to NBA and, and automatically score 20 points. So, I mean, maybe Unless we'll see the – yeah, exactly. Unless you're once-in-a-lifetime talent. But you, you may see these guys take note of this and say, like, hey, these guys – aren't ready so unless money is is a factor and that's that's what's going to be is the first 10 picks get a lot of money so you get drafted first year out you know you're going to be a first 10 pick you're going to take the money but all these guys that money doesn't matter and their career matters they may stay a little bit longer and get more used to a game at a higher level in college than to just jump to the nba or just hang out in college i mean yeah college is fun as shit i didn't go to college i wish i could have went there from what i've heard van wilder (laughs) yeah i know but uh what was Mitchell like the the thirteenth? Thirteenth pick. pick. Yeah, that's good knowledge. He just came up with that number off the dome. That was no research. No research. Hey man, you know sometimes it sticks. Man, a lucky number, dude. Well, you are a uh, trivia master. I yeah, so, I uh, a Santa Clara cha- or Campbell champion. Uh, Willow Glen, but oh okay, Willow you know, got to class it up sometimes. Fervid asked, "This day and age, does eBay influence Beckett value a hundred percent?" Beckett I, probably gets all their values from eBay. They get their values from eBay, but you know. I like some of the things that Beckett does, but I will say the price guide, it does not matter. It does not matter. eBay value matters. It's what people are willing to pay for these cards. I mean, I guess you could kind of use it as a reference on some of the vintage cards that are out there, but, you know, it's just going to be what people are going to pay for it. The, so, but, but, yeah, Beckett gets all of their they, – they make their values off of eBay now. Yeah. Because I, uh, I don't know if you guys talked about this before with people – but, you know, back in the day, back at how they used to get values on cars, they would call up all of the local card shops and be like, hey, how much are you selling this car for? Hey, how much are you selling this car for? That's how they would get their you values. compile the data. Yeah, they, they actually compile the data. So this day and age, they're not calling card shops. They're looking at eBay yeah. and to figure out how much cards are worth. It's going to be a lot of data, a lot of data to make that. That sounds a lot thing. easier than doing the groundwork and calling up every single card shop. Right, right. Well, because that that's tricky. Different different cards are going to sell for different amounts in different markets. Right. Yeah. Giant so, cards are going to sell better. Yeah. In that, our market. that that actually that is even that doesn't even seem like a good idea. It doesn't even seem like a good game plan of going about and judging it because. But before the internet, I mean, what are you going to base data on? Yeah. I mean, that's the only way to probably check. They probably demand. like they probably zone in on all the, like the bigger card shops throughout the United States, and you know, kind of like, hey, how much are you selling this card? This Jordan. You know, this, this it was probably, you insert. know, back in those days for the, and there's probably some of you guys that were selling cards back then. I know Brian Gray from leaf talks about it and stuff like that. You really didn't have, you could sell cards for whatever you wanted to sell cards for, because it really wasn't unless the guy next to you had the same exact card. It's not like anybody was pulling up their phone and saying, Oh, you know, this, this sells for $150 on eBay. You know, you're like, Hey, $200 for this Ken Griffey. Okay. I really want it. And I have 200 bucks. I mean, that's, 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 a, that's the bottom line. Now everybody's, Looking at values and trying to haggle based on on what things sell for. So yeah, but I still I, I'm still dead every time somebody's like, well, you know, this is Beckett value, so I'm looking for a low, low, low. Yeah, right, right. I'm like, bro, I know. You got to get hip to the uh, the new way of selling. Speaking of selling, Donovan Mitchell's first uh, couple cards one one big gold prism sold for a thousand. That's on the next screen. So it's um, rookie auto number to ten sold for with bids thousand dollars and thirty uh, thousand and thirty dollars. With four dollars shipping, it's crazy. He, he literally went up every single day since Prism has gone up. Has yeah, been out. Yeah, he's uh, the poster child for the stock market on Prism. So I think he scored thirty something last night. Yeah, the uh, the game after because he was the first rookie for a long time, maybe ever. I don't know. Scored like over twenty points in five straight games or something like that. So he's he's putting up points. He got the juice. 
putting up points. Yep, and that we- that shows that it. But Utah Jazz, it it gets it's at it gets to a point if a player is performing, it does not matter if they're just lighting it up. It does not matter what team. Yeah. It's still gonna. It's, I mean, it's, it's now granted, now granted, if, long term, granted, long term, yes, and granted, I don't know what the prices would be if that was Lakers or the Knicks. Right, might be I mean, two thousand, might be double. who? Who knows? Who knows? But that shows that still. I mean, Utah Jazz, not a, not a, not a big market, but still getting over a thousand bucks. Yeah, for those listening to it on the podcast, it's a gold auto uh, number to ten. Uh, for a thousand, the next screen is the highest selling Prism Silver rookie I could find, and it goes to Donovan Mitchell. Okay, it, so he's officially past Jason Tatum. He moment. he is. I mean, there was some buy it nows that sell kind of early on Jason Tatum and stuff like that. But four hundred and one dollars on with bids, thirty three bids on a Donovan Mitchell Silver Refractor. So that was probably one of the first ones to end. I I don't think I think it'll probably be around the three hundred dollar range, but. Who knows? He puts up another forty-point game. Maybe it could go to five hundred. But that is literally crazy. That is a, a a numbered card or a non-numbered card that sold for four hundred dollars. Let me ask both of you guys this: If you had to guesstimate how many silver prisms of each guy were produced, and I know we're just totally spitballing here, but what do you think? What's your take, Dan? Um, a thousand. I think there's a thousand of each each guy. I think there's a thousand. I think basically it's numbered to nine ninety nine. See, Rad, what do you think? That sounds that sounds about right to me. Yeah, I'm thinking two thousand. I'm I'm thinking you're high. <laughs> I may be high in the numbers. No, because but... think. I mean, think. I mean, think about how many we've pulled. There's five hundred some odd cards in a checklist. And you get about twelve silver rookies so, uh, per case. Uh, per case on average so that's what we, we pulled we counted we got some cases we had 10 some cases we had 13 you get, you get like it was one, 12 you get silver like one prisms. probably in every what every pack every other pack yeah seems so like you're getting about let's say 10 to 12 per box so maybe about 120 in a case yeah i would i would say i i it, then they made a shit ton of it if if, if it's if it's 2000 yeah, it's probably closer to a thousand. I mean, number number to nine. If it were, if they were stamped, I I have a question for you. Yeah. If they were numbered and stamped, numbered to nine ninety nine, would they sell for as no, much? No, absolutely not. Absolutely. Because not. the ones that are stamped one ninety nine, the blue ones, the blue ones don't sell for as much, and yeah. they're stamped at one ninety nine. And I'll actually, uh, I'm glad you you segued me right into something perfect. I that's Is what I, I do. I segue. You segue. I so segue. I did some research on Lonzo Ball in particular. Um, Lonzo Ball's silver prism sells for a little over 300, 305, I believe. Lonzo's number to 199 sold for $136. Lonzo's cracked to 99 sold for 265, which I think was a little high. It was a buy it now. Lonzo's number to 75 sold for 220. Lonzo's number to 49 sold for 500. Lonzo's number to 25 sold for 350. And the gold was a best offer accepted at $3,000 on a gold number to 10 Lonzo ball. Thanks. So the silver pretty much outweighs all of those with the exception of maybe the number to 49, which I think that that was an inflated buy it now. And the number to 25, it's on par. So really the only thing, so we can make the assessment here that the only card that's worth more than the silver is the gold and, of course, the black, right? So you, you, if you don't get silver, you want – if you don't get gold, you want silver, and then the rest of them are all just kind of consolation. Um, I mean, the number to 25 will sell for the, – the Mojo Silver will sell for as much as the silver. So – but then there's hyper that are I think there's trying to be some hyper hyper demand being created. The hyper dema- uh, hyper silvers which I don't have a picture of, but they have that kind of zigzagging going through them. Those are going for more than I thought. They're I think the Donovan Mitchell went for like 250 on the silver on the hyper prism. Yeah, and uh as far as retail, don't know if there's going to be silvers. Yeah. Uh, I I actually think uh, the shop is getting a couple of cases of retail. I think it's actually either coming in Friday or it may actually come in Monday. Right. I think it's being shipped from uh, the East Coast. So uh, I would be speculating 
if if I had to come up with a I, I don't I don't think you're gonna see silvers in in the retail. Well, we have already confirmed thanks to Ziggy that there is no silvers in the fast break version. Um, that they have a whole different run of parallels in the fast break version. All it's almost like a whole other product. Now they're gonna have the same pictures and everything like that, but all the refractors are gonna be completely different in the fast break version. Which is just a kind of a mystery to any of us because it came out two weeks. They pre-sold it two weeks before this release. Nobody had any idea of this thing. And it's only being sold through DA and Blowout. Never was offered to us from any of our major distributors that sell every single product, including retail. It wasn't offered to us. Very strange. Now, the other conspiracy here is... Um, and... Uh, Actually, you know what? We got we got one more thing to talk about before we get into the other conspiracy about the fast break is I wanted to ask you guys long term value. Who would you rather have Donovan Mitchell or Jason Tatum? It's still Jason Tatum for me right now. Jason Tatum. What if Donovan Mitchell was on the Celtics and <clears throat> Tatum was on the Jazz? Same thing. Jason so? Tatum. Yeah. I don't know. I just I don't I like Donna like I I was big I was a big fan of Tatum prior to the season. I just he seems soft to me. That's that's my problem with him. Donovan Mitchell seems like he has that grit. He has that grit. That, well, that, that, I mean, that, I will that, that, that I aggressiveness. will I will give you the two picture you, the two pictures you used. Donovan Mitchell looks pretty confident with the thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> and Jason Tatum looks like he is super bummed and looks like he just airballed something. No, he's actually hit a three. Do you see the uh, – He's the, holding uh, the three. Oh, I, yeah. No, it look, looks like he's like, oh, not again. I missed well, that, another shot. That's what he looks like. So that's what I'm saying. I like Donovan Mitchell's grit. It's just he plays for the Jazz, which what, what prospects, phenom, or whatever we call basketball uh, <laughs> rookies. Don, does Donovan have grit or does he need a score because they got nobody else on the squad? That's, a, that's another good point. That's <laughs> another good point. Yeah, how many points would we put up if he had Kyrie on his name? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good point. It could be the Kevin Love uh, Minnesota Timberwolves situation where somebody's got to score, right? Jason so. Jason Tatum's going to be an all star. We'll ask you guys in the chat who would you rather have long term, Donovan Mitchell or Jason Tatum? So obviously the bigger prospect coming in the draft was Jason Tatum, but with the way Donovan Mitchell's been scoring lately, I know it's early on, but can we say that Donovan Mitchell is a premier pro, premier phenom? So we'll see. But uh, fast break, we were talking about it. We were alluding to fast break. Uh, here's a picture of the box. Uh, looks like it's only sold through DA and Blowout. I think it's uh, averaging um, $149 a box. As you can see, 18 packs, five cards per pack. Has its own parallel set. And you could find one autograph per box. And they're promising a Jason Tatum, a Lonzo Ball, a De'Aaron Fox, or a Markel Fultz in every case. So this brings me to the uh, kind of the conspiracy here is that the only autos you're pulling in the hobby that we did of Jason Tatum, Lonzo Ball, Markel Fultz, and De'Aaron Fox is this design, which does not have a rookie card logo on it. Um, if you go to the next slide with Frank, with the Frank, that is the rookie card design that we're pulling up everybody else. There's no rookie card logo prisms of Lonzo, Tatum, Fultz, or Fox on eBay. That's a problem. So that's weird. So to me, I'm thinking each uh, athlete signed the same amount of stickers. And because they promise in fast break, one of those guys, instead of making this subset, they put all of those in fast break. That's my opinion, which is kind of janky. Sounds right to me. But that's that's the rookie auto you want, in my opinion. The rookie, the auto that has the rookie card logo, the prism with the rookie card logo would be what I would consider the true rookie out of the set. Yeah. That's the one you want. The other one, I think of it as the same thing as like an insert auto. Right. Doesn't have a rookie card logo. That 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 you I mean, of course, it is still a rookie, but without the rookie card logo, I don't think I don't really feel like it's a true rookie. I think it's an insert auto. The inserts are definitely a better design. I that, think the, it, the insert is a better design. I know. I was going to say the the rookie design is kind of ugly. It's as a better shit, design, like but I think if if you want, if you're piecing one of these players, I think that you want that that card right there, the the one with the rookie logo, the rookie shield on it. And you know, I also alluded to during the break, which I thought was funny, is that Alonzo Ball autograph because that's a silver prism essentially. That's that's exactly the silver prism like that. Um, I was wondering if somebody would actually could you could take off the sticker and call it a silver prism. It would actually sell more than the autograph, probably. 
Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that kind of crazy? But it does say it has a little shading on it and it says autograph on the back. So you wouldn't be able to pull it off. The scammers wouldn't be able to pull it off. But um, I thought it was kind of an interesting thing. That is thing. hella funny. <laughs> You know what I'm You're saying? Literally take it off and be it'll be a silver prison. <laughs> and it'd be worth more than the autograph. On certain in certain instances. <laughs> Probably not on Frank, but on like Lonzo and Tatum. So they hear some of Tatum's and Lonzo's prices. It seems like they're going around three hundred for silver prisms, kind of give or take. Lonzo competing with Tatum. I mean, I, I expect a fall off on Lonzo. I mean, what do you think? I mean, he keeps shooting this way. I think there's gonna be a lot of people jumping off this bandwagon on Lonzo. Oh, there's nobody on it. <laughs> today, today. Obviously, there is. Somebody's no, paying three hundred dollars no. for a silver. Is that three bids? Three bids. Yeah. Three bids. Three okay. Bids. Yeah, a lot of people. There's only three people on the bandwagon. <laughs> it's gonna fluctuate all year. It it's is. Gonna go, it's gonna go up and down depending on his play. I mean, he's still doing things that no rookie has done. He, he had a triple double. 11, he's the youngest guy to hit triple double. So. Eleven. Eleven people on the, uh, the the Tatum bandwagon. On the Tatum. And only yeah. three. But. That was one of those. One of those is probably Lavar. One of the pictures. Oh, yeah, just bidding on it. Bidding just, on just it. Just adding the value to, <laughs> to his son. <laughs> Might have been. Man, the saga that is a LeVar Ball. But back to Panini and Prism. Um, I mean, what do we think? I mean, printing money? Are, are we printing money? Are we sacrificing the collectability with as many sets as they made of Prism? But we're they're printing money, but the boxes are still bringing in money. So it's a very interesting uh, situation that these uh, boxes are still climbing and they made 17 different versions of Prism this year. Well, what do you think the box... If, if we do find out, it looks like Fast Break, the Fast Break version of it doesn't have silvers, and the retail will find out if it has silvers or not. What does that do to the box prices going forward on Prism Hobby? Jumps it up. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Where's the ceiling? I don't know, five hundred, six hundred dollars a box. Oh, that's crazy. That's, oh well, that, right that, now, I mean, that's crazy. Right now, I, right now, full. right now at three fifty or whatever, whatever it's going for. I mean, that that's insane. I mean, the the only thing you need to look at. I mean, it, it it's it sounds crazy, but it's it's in his in the history of basketball collecting has happened. Look at the price of tops chrome boxes of LeBron's rookie year. Insane. Yeah. How much? Uh, you talking about what are they like up to like a thousand dollars a box? Yeah. Now? Yeah. But that's, I mean, fifteen hundred maybe. We gotta say safely if 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 everybody ripped. I mean, all all of us breakers ripped a bunch of product last week. Blowout sold a bunch of it. There's still gotta be safely fifty percent of the run still unopened somewhere, right? Which if they made seven thousand cases, there's still thirty five hundred cases probably out there in the market somewhere being held by blowout or being held by DA or being held by a distributor until it goes to the price where they want to sell it at. So it's just it's a crazy concept and. They're really not using any resources because they don't have any relics. All they have is autographs. And I mean, and we're not even chasing autographs. We're just chasing cards. We're chasing silver cards that aren't numbered. It's 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 an insane time for this hobby, an insane time for NBA cards. I want to know if you guys think that because in prior years before the silver prism popped, everybody doesn't know they have silvers or maybe they threw them away and that's why they're more scarce and that's why they're worth as much money as they are. Everybody's going to keep these prisms now. So there's going to be a lot in the market. Do you think that's going to affect everybody's now aware of how much silver prism is worth? Is that going to affect the market going forward? Cause there's so many of them possibly going to be in the market compared to, I want to go dig through my boxes and see if I have a Giannis somewhere. Cause I, I'm I guarantee I open a pack and through a Giannis somewhere in a box with a bunch of other base cards and didn't think anything of it because nobody knew anything back then. I, uh, we, we, uh, we donate cards, uh, cards to kids, cards for kids. Yeah. Yes. And back when that was coming out, we were basically ripping that stuff like crazy and we were donating ton. I mean, we're talking like shoe boxes and shoe boxes and shoe boxes. There had to be a handful of silver Giannis prisms in there. Yeah. I mean, just based on just the odds. The odds would state there had to be at least a couple of them in there. Yeah. So. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I it's it's they made so much of them, but now people are aware of it and they're keeping them. So are we borderline overproduction with this set? What do you guys think? C-Rad, are we overproduction on prism? Getting close, I think. Getting close. Yeah, but the market's still good, so maybe it's not. If people are still paying $300 on silver prisms, then 
they made they made enough, right? I guess bottom line. So we'll we'll see in a couple months. So, but uh, Lonzo Lonzo Ball is in the, I think in the next frame. Panini Panini making money having Lonzo sign cards. Um, we did a uh, unboxing of the thousand dollar Lonzo Prime Remix, and you can kind of scrub through that video there. And I have the shoes actually behind me. So this was a thousand dollars, promising a Lonzo Ball autograph on one of the shoes. Supposed to come with an acrylic case. Didn't come with an acrylic case, but I guess the acrylic case is being shipped. What I thought was kind of interesting about the whole thing was the quality of the box it came in. I buy Nike shoes. I buy $170 Adidas shoes. I love comfortable shoes. I love shoes that look cool. Um, I'm a shoe guy. Um, this box looked well inferior to any of those products, and it's a $1,000 box. The shoe looks cool. The auto autograph looks great. But uh, And if you're watching on uh, iTunes, you may want to look at our unboxing video on YouTube so you know what we're talking about. But uh, the box quality, and I think I zoom in here, it, the box itself is just straight falling apart. It was just straight falling apart on us. So what's going on, LeVar? Stop messing around with Trump and make some better boxes. And it's global authentic, which... I need to do some research on on the company Global, so because um, I think they had some some weird stuff going on with them. So, but that is the ZO2 Prime Remix. Um, what do you think from a shoe perspective, C Rad? What do you think about the shoe itself? Uh, <laughs> it's a uh, not a great design. It's cheap. It, it, it looks cheap. I mean, when you understand when you understand how much it actually costs to make your own shoe. Um, how much Nike and Adidas and Reebok pay designers to come up with these shoes? It it's not it's not an easy business, and I and I honestly I wouldn't expect tri uh, Triple B Big Baller Man to come out of the gate with some sick looking shoes that are, you know, high performance or of high quality. But you know it, you you can't charge that much money for something like that. You you just you just can't. You you're gonna you you're asking people to pay you know five hundred to a thousand dollars for these shoes. Granted, they have Lonzo Ball's autograph on it. Yes, I get that, but the quality of the the box, the quality of the shoes, it you're gonna turn people off, and then they're never gonna return as a repeat customer. And that that's not a good first impression to make. When yeah, you're I mean, spending that kind of amount, amount of money, even if you want to support, you know. You want to support people doing things. I, I'm fully for that. Like for the entrepreneurship, creating your own yeah. brand. Yeah, like I'm, I'm all for that, and I'll, and I'll support it. But if you're putting out, if you're promising one thing and delivering another, that's that's you know, and it's not chump change either. This is this is a lot of money. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a lot of money, and um, they did a, obviously a great job of of promoting their brand. Uh, the stats on Twitter was. Shoe companies, 35 million mentions on Twitter for Nike, 17 million mentions for um, Adidas, and third was Big Baller Brand, <laughs> which they beat out Reebok, Under Armour for mentions, which is absolutely crazy for an established brand like Reebok to get beat out by Big Baller Brand. So they've done a great job of hyping, you know, no pun intended, the product. But when the product comes to be delivered, first off, they they did a bait and switch. They did a design, pre-sold it, and then they changed the design midway through, and then they didn't ship the acrylic case. Was that the uh, was that the purple Showtime? No, the one that, in the beginning of the video there. Because I you, did I, I saw they have those too, but it, that's the original design there. You can see that it's a little bit more on the matte side. There's a clear piece, so they redid it. Uh, supposedly, the reason they redid it was they wanted the shoe to be lighter. Well, I'll tell you right now this this tongue right here. Yeah. That's that's terrible. I mean, look look how thin that is. It's, well, yeah. I mean, I'd have to put them on to really feel it because I mean, the, nah, the, the Kevin Durant I have is it like the same like kind that, of tongue? Like that, like uh, that. You could rip that. Yeah. It's, it's 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 a little piece of foam. It's not being good. It's um, good. where's my for a thousand dollars, dude? Where's my air bubble? I know, right? I mean, that makes that's what I bought Nikes. Can I, you, you can know, I get two hundred dollars? You get an air bubble. In can them, I get right? an air bubble? I mean, you used to basically judge how badass your shoe was with. How many air bubbles you had on the on the sole? Yeah, this has zero. zero so air zero bubbles. badass at all. Like, I, dude, it kind of looks like a dad shoe. <laughs> it kind of like, does. I'll be honest. Like, um, I'm a big Jordan shoe guy too. Like, I was when I was a kid growing up. Like, growing up, I never my parents never got me any. But when I was a teenager, got my first job. 
I started buying Jordans. And um, when I look at the Jordans that come out nowadays, they first of all, they charge more because they're trying to cut into the uh, resale market, uh, you know, after after market prices. So so they charge more now for Jordans, and the quality is lower. And even at $250, I feel like sometimes I'm getting ripped off, let alone, you know, buying some, uh, you know, whatever these the cost of these shoes are. I, I can see how people are, are disappointed. Yeah. Wearing these, I'm not going to feel like a big baller. No. I may be like, somebody may be like, did you get those at Payless, bro? Like, you're out there playing in them. They're like, I mean, the Triple B logo looks a lot better on a, on a shirt than it does on a shoe. Isn't this the same, like, the same material that they, uh, that the Kanye West shoes? No, it's a little bit more ribbed. I mean, I've never seen the Kanye West in is person. It, is it the Yeezy? Is that Yeezy, what it, the yes. Yeezy? Yes, those are made by Adidas, and those go for that was shit made, tons. That was made by Kanye. Yeah, yeah. Is it made by Kanye? Or is it made? By, it's an Adidas shoe that it, it's so Kanye has a signature shoe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's big time. He has a signature shoe that's made by Adidas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because him. he calls himself Yeezus, so they went with Yeezy. So you buy that shoe and you you ball out like Kanye West. You get Kim Kardashian. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, and you start having a lot of kids. Yeezy saw me and go crazy at shows, call him a bunch of political stuff, and but uh, quit your tour. Um, the WTF moment of last week with Prism was, um, this guy, Firkin. I was like, who is this real? Is this guy real? Supposedly he's a Turkish player. He is, he's on, he's in the Sixers. He's actually playing for the 87ers right now, but, uh, that was a weird, a weird name and a funny name. Funny name of the set. Firkin Korkmaz. What up, Firkin? That's a guy's name that you could do it backwards and you probably wouldn't even know that it was, you know, wrong. That that could have been a name too. Looks like it could be backwards. Zamkrup, uh, Nakruf, Nakruf, yeah, Nakruf, uh, Zamkrok, <laughs> Zamkrok. It's the same thing. <laughs> so we'll see. Maybe he'll be the next. Uh, maybe he'll be the next um, Dirk Nowitzki. But speaking of basketball, brand new set comes out today. Core Kings. Core Kings always is a pretty good set on card autos. They kind of stepped it up in the design department this year, in my opinion. We've got breaks, uh, we've got four breaks today of Court Kings. We got three team style, one random. So check that out. There's some teams on sale for those breaks, and I think the random's almost full. So, and those have all the guys we've been talking about: Donovan Mitchell, Fultz, Ball, all in Court Kings, and uh, they have prime patches, dual autos. They got the different uh, versions of the rookie card. So it's gonna be a little f- a fun set. Two hits a box. Uh, you had a chance at autograph box toppers. It's a fun, fun yeah, set, it's, and it's, it's a staple. Year to year, it seems like this is everybody's favorite, one of everybody's favorite, like, you know, uh, lower-end product to get into. And uh, people were saying, you think silvers are SP to nine ninety nine? I, I, I think, I, originally I was thinking 2000 but after they talked me off the ledge, I think it probably is closer to 1000 Well, Buster was like, if they're, if they're numbered to nine ninety nine, then they made 33,000 cases. And 33,000 cases between... Hobby, first off the line, retail, and fast break. It's a possibility. That I don't I don't think that number is crazy. Yeah. But if it's number to two thousand, then that would be sixty six thousand cases. Jesus. Yeah. I think Then we'd be I, like I, I'm gonna, swimming in the money. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with the under on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Um it may actually be less closer to five hundred, maybe between five hundred and a thousand. Yeah, between five hundred and a thousand. Yeah. But I, I think it's funny that if you were to stamp nine ninety nine on those cards, they would be eight dollars. They would. Yeah. So it's better better it's off better, not it's, I guess it's better not not to know. It's just like, you know, if you were dating a girl and she said she slept with a thousand guys, you probably wouldn't want to be with her anymore, right? But she's like, ah, I've been around a little bit. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Okay. <laughs> I think it was a pretty fair comparison. No, I mean, I I, I get that. I, you know I, I mean, you don't want the, the less you know, the better, right? It's just kind of, kind of got weird, went a little <laughs> off topic. That's not that's not card that's related. I, that's what I do. That's why we call it the tangent. You know, that's why we call it the tangent. But yeah, the answer. Uh, I think C Rad's answering Holtz in the chat. The reason why Court Kings is is because they have them sign them at the rookie premiere. So they actually have it physically, and that's why they're able to do it on card. Because if it's on, they ha- they make them so far in advance. They do the college unis, they have Qu- them signed on card. Kings is actually one of the first product they print. That's why they're, uh, and you know, like something with Prism, they can put them in pro uniforms because they got sticker autos. Exactly. 
What, uh, if, what if it was like? What if she's like I back back to it? She's like I I've only been with like nine hundred ninety nine. <laughs> okay, that's like, my <laughs> limit was a thousand. Because I mean I'm saying these cards are maybe numbered to nine ninety nine, not not a thousand. Yeah. 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 You find out the girl you're dating has been in a bunch of like you know videos. How do you take that one? Like, oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, that's not good. But uh, let's go into Bowman Draft came out today, and you know Bowman's Bowman is where it's at for baseball. If you if you don't collect baseball cards, this is these guys. Most of them were from the 2017 Bo, uh, MLB draft, so they haven't even taken a major league at bat. Some of them have been a rookie ball, so on and so forth. But this is where all the big names get their start. Buster Posey got his first Bowman card in 2008. Mike Trout got his first Bowman card in 2009. And those historically are the number one card you want to collect from your player. Aaron Judge, 2013 draft. Um, Bryce Harper wasn't in draft because he was in Bowman, but most of them get their start in Bowman draft. They always hold one or two guys. One of the top names out. Chris Bryant was held out. Um, Speculating probably the uh, Hunter Green. Yes, he's Pro- our, he, probably probably going to be the guy that they're going to put in Bowman. He's going to be put. Yeah, he's going to be in Bowman. I think he's confirmed for that. So Hunter Green, I think second overall pick. I think second overall pick Reds. Mm-hmm. And he's uh, the top ranked. I think he's ranked thirtieth. Did, did you see? Because uh, we were again we're talking about Bowman, so I guess it is on topic. Flipping through these cards, there's a uh, there's a Fairchild. Yes, shout out to Billy. Did you see what team he plays for? He plays for the Reds. I, like, I said the same thing during my portion. I was like, I got to take a picture. He's like, got, like you got to PC that, right? That has to be a PC. Yeah, if there was a Caskey somewhere you know, on, on, the, on a team. The, on the Giants. Especially on the Giants, <laughs> but any team I'd collect them. I'd is be that, collecting Is that Billy's cousin? I know. We should ask what him. What is Let's, it? Is it Steven, was Steven Fairchild? Stewart. Stewart Fairchild. Stewart, Stewart Fairchild. But uh, some interest. So I went. I went through uh, Baseball America. So Mackenzie Gore is the top ranked autograph guy in the set, pitcher for the Padres, and he's ranked thirty one on the top one hundred Baseball America prospect list. Uh, number forty is Brendan McKay. Uh, number forty one is Kyle Wright, and uh, Brendan McKay was kind of Shohei Otani before Shohei Otani. This is a guy that plays first base and can pitch. And was one uh, considered one of the first uh, two-way players coming out of the draft in recent years before Shohei Otani. Uh, so we'll see what the Rays do with him. If he's going to be a pitcher, a hitter, a first baseman, we'll see. Um, I guess this is not the best prospect video. We don't want to see him playing first. but uh, He's struggling with that throw to second, though. Yeah, so, so maybe he'll be <laughs> a pitcher. Almost threw that in the left field. This is what I was watching. Good swing. You know, lefty power hitter. Um, so it'll be interesting to see he's... He's a Golden Spikes Award I winner. I can't so. see. Oh, he can bunt. That's good. Look at those. Look at those jerseys. Those are cool. So if you're not, once wanna, again, you're listening on iTunes. We got a video going of Brendan McKay uh, via Prospect Pipeline, which uh, does a lot of prospect stuff on YouTube. But uh, he's he's got probably the most hype coming out of Bowman Draft. That's probably the number one guy uh, out of the gate that you want for Bowman Draft. What what team again? The Rays. The Rays. So it is a small market team, but you know the Rays have had some success in the past. Um, they've got a lot of prospects, so we'll see uh, what what happens with him, and we'll see what they use him for. If he pitches, if he's going to play for space. Um, so it's going to be an interesting uh, storyline with this guy, and I think there'll be a little bit of hype on him. It looks like his autos are. Base autos out of the gate are selling for about 150. It says first base right there. So does does say first I base. Know, uh, I don't know where you're getting that pitching from, but maybe he pitched in a uh, little league. No, no, he's a. Uh, he... There's a lot of guys who pitch. A Buster Posey pitched in college. Yeah, but coming out of the draft, they said he was good enough to be a pitcher in major league. So it just you know they're they're probably trying it out in rookie ball and see what happens. So. Um, has there been another flawless? No, nah, I think that's the only one I saw. MH was the uh, Simmons for 13. But the interesting thing about McKay is the lineage of Golden Spike Award winners. So he won the 2017 Golden Spikes Award. And I've been using that to kind of judge prospects because they have a great uh, amount of success with the guys that get the Golden Spikes Award given to the top college. Good track uh, record phenom coming out of the draft if you look at recent years uh they have a pretty last 10 years have been pretty damn good so we'll start in 2007 david price won the award buster posey won it in 2008 steven strasburg won in 2009 bryce harper won it in 2010 trevor bauer won it in 2011 Eh, not a superstar serviceable pitcher mike zunino won it in 2012 you know he hasn't really done anything yet chris bryant won it in 2013 so the biggest names in our hobby chris bryant and bryce harper 
Golden Spikes. So if you're ever f- trying to find a reason to invest in a guy, you can go off the Golden Spikes award list. I forget Buster Posey. Yeah, Buster Posey. I mean, and then uh, Andrew Benatendi won it in 2015. Kyle Lewis won it in 2016, and he's still kind of developing in the Mariners organization. So that kid could hit, though. He could hit. That he could hit. Yeah. So get, get ready. Get ready for him. I think. I think he may be. He may be the next guy. Yeah. I, he looked he, quick, good fielder. Um, I I think he's battling some injuries. So as long as the kid can stay he's, healthy, he's a big boy though. He, yeah, he can hit. Yeah, maybe maybe Aaron Judge status. Yeah, could be. So um, yeah, what did we see? We seen him in San Jose, right? So I'm in San Jose, and yeah. we thought he got traded because he got taken off the thought field. He but going, he got, thought he's going to the Giants. Actually, we I, we thought he was going to the A's. Yeah, we, had, yeah. we thought we thought he was in the trade for Sonny Gray. Yes, that was Sonny Gray going to the Mariners. Kyle Lewis going to the A's, Death the and prospects. there goes his card value. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. A's fans. The A's do have a, a a top pick in draft, though. They have a what? What is his uh, Austin his, Beck? Austin Beck. I don't think he's a pitcher. No, I think no. He, I think he's a. But yeah, I mean, I think he's fifth or sixth overall. Yep. So, and then Royce Lewis is also another big name, um, drafted out of high school, so you're going to have to wait a little bit on him, but he's got a lot of hype and plays for Minnesota. So, his stuff's uh, going up. So, I think the top four guys, what we mentioned so far, Royce Lewis, uh, Brendan McKay, um, Joe Adele is another big name in this for the Angels. Those guys are all on the top 100 in Mackenzie Gore, on the top 100 prospects considered by Baseball America, which Yohan Moncada is number one right now. So that kind of shows you the pecking order. But it seems like they bump up newly drafted guys right away, and then they kind of pull them back as, as time goes on. But uh, we are doing more draft today. We've got uh, a super jumbo case coming up. With I, I don't know if there's any teams left. I think the random sold out, but we do have, I think, one more. We might have one more team style, but if not, we have some more on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll be doing Bowman Draft. And this stuff always does well, and it's always good value. We're shipping out all chromes. There's a chance of super fractors. So for baseball, this is a set to collect and a set to kind of prospect and hold on to. I mean, and uh, we in the second case, there was uh, one box that had five autos, which I was reading on Twitter. That wasn't just isolated. I have actually seen multiple people say that they've had boxes that were over delivering on autos. Yeah. So. Hey, little bonus. Little bonus. And, Tops always serves us right. And we pulled some big ones. I mean, both cases that we did earlier today were really, really good. Uh, hit a Royce Lewis blue refractor auto out of the second case. Uh, it's good stuff. Yeah. It's 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 a really, really, I mean, it's a solid investment. It is. Yeah, and that's the beauty about baseball collecting is you don't know these guys could be good in five years. So you could sit and watch this guy go through the minors and, and just, you know, really maximize your entertainment value out of your, your investment. Because, like, you buy a guy in basketball, you guy buy a guy in football, you, you know right away if it's gonna, he's going to be good or not for the most part. So unless he's a quarterback that's, like, kind of a backup for a while. So, But I wanted to get into the next segment, and I wanted to talk about Shohei Otani. The sweepstakes is heating. I know you guys are hyped up. <laughs> we are. We'll see. I, I, he's gotten to the twenty second. He's he's not going to be a giant. Well, we'll see. Um, there's a one in seven chance. So, but this kid, I mean, I'm watching videos on him. They call him the Japanese Babe Ruth. Um, I've got a few videos here. This was um, a home run he hit in the tunnel in the WBC. Um, didn't even look like he swung that hard. Just uh, swang. Is that the right word? Is that the right swang? Swang in him. I think it's swing, but whatever. And if you go to the next uh, video, I think it's him um, hitting the ball through the roof. He actually hit the ball through the roof. First off, he started running around the bases. I think he thought it was a home run. I don't know what they called it, but uh, he hit the ball so high. And you can see the camera. I didn't even know where it is. It was ridiculous. Once again, iTunes podcasters. There's a video we're watching, commenting on. Shohei Otani basically hit a ball through the Tokyo Dome, through through the roof. Um, and they'll show a slow-mo here of the ball just basically disappearing. The kid's got a sweet swing. He also is one. He pitches over 100 miles an hour, which is very few and far between. What is that? Is that a ground rule double? I don't know. I don't know what the ruling is on that, but the ball went through the dome. That's hella funny. Disappeared. <laughs> Gone. It looked like it was about to go about 500 feet, too. I mean, it still was going. It's not like it was peaking there. It was still going. 
It's crazy. And and it's just this kid is young. He's 22. And, and, and another thing they were saying about him is that he – has they haven't really overused him? Guys in the past, like um, Matsui, uh, Nomo, these guys were like used every day, pitched every day because they just it's different in Japan. So they're saying this guy has he has a lot of potential. And um, here's the suitors, and I want to let you guys. I'll, I'll start with Dan. If you go to the next page, these are the seven teams that are in the sweepstakes. Dodgers, Giants, Angels, Padres, Mariners, Cubs, and Rangers are the seven teams left that he will go to. So I'll start with Dan. What do you think for his cards is the best place for him to land? Uh, Dodgers or Cubs? Uh, I think he'll probably... I See, I... I think he'll get kind of lost in both those teams, but I just based on being a big market, I think Dodgers are Cubs for his card value. Um, for his personal success and personal like value, um, and where I think he'd probably fit in best, uh, Dodgers, Giants, Mariners, or Cubs. Okay. Uh, well, the Angels just signed Kevin Maiden. That doesn't mean they're out of the Otani sweepstakes. I didn't say the Angels. No, I know. I'm thinking. Are, can we kind of say the Angels are out of it? Are they? You know, that's that'd be an interesting thing. They went. I think. Maiden. I think. I think all those teams are are still in it. Again, he. What is what? What's he owed? Like a. It's like a three, three hundred thousand dollars signing bonus. Is what I mean. All those teams could definitely afford that. Yeah. Um. I just. Uh, it's it's just gonna be where he wants to play. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think. I think. Any one of those seven teams will gladly accept him. It's he can choose which one he wants, which one he thinks that he's going to fit in. I it sounds like he kind of wants to be one of the high profile players on a team. Yeah, going to the Angels not going to happen. Mike Trout. As long as Mike Trout's there, Mike Trout's the face of that franchise. Uh, The Giants. I think the Giants actually can use another face, another face, a a newer face. They've been using Bumgarner and Posey and those guys. Not that they're getting old, but they're probably on the on the back nine of their career at this point. Um, I mean, how long can Posey really play for? 15 years. Yeah. Been in the league since 2010. So we're eight years. So he's about halfway through his career. Bumgarner's a pitcher. How many? How many years can Bun- Gun- uh, Bumgardner basically pitch 200 innings right before he starts breaking down? Um, so I think I think the Giants he could be part of the new uh, the new era. Yeah, coming in. I mean, you basically put him and oh, I hope, but I game. you know I I always a lot of, we don't get a lot of free agents, so I you know a lot of people don't put, pick this place to play. But I mean, well, he he I would think... he would be a face with the Rangers. He'd be the face. Uh, yeah. The Cubs, he will not be the face. That's Chris Bryant. It's gonna be Chris Bryant for a long time. Yeah, and Rizzo. Uh, and Rizzo and Padres, he can be the face of the franchise. The Dodgers, it's Clayton Kershaw. It's the, Clayton Kershaw until he decides that he wants. The Mariners, to. he could be the face too. I mean, and they had they had Ichiro for several years, so I mean, I'm sure there's. Yeah, the Marin the Mariners, he can he can fit in the Mariners. Uh, Padres pa- too. Padres as well. They're saying the Padres might have an outside chance more than people would think. So we'll see. Um, the, the, so I was reading the, some scouting report on him. I guess there was a little bit of a – because he was injured last year, but people were saying, ah, oh, players get injured. It's not it's not like he's injury prone. Um, but he's looking to build upon a stellar career. In four seasons on the mound for the fighter, fighters, he's gone 39-13 and 13 with a 2.4 ERA in 80 games. He's thrown 517 p- professional in- innings, allowing 371 hits, 22 homers, and 181 walks while striking out 595 batters. His career whip is 1.06. His career strikeout to walk is 3.2 to 1, and he's averages 10.3 strikeouts per nine innings. So, um, and his, yeah, his hitting, um, I, I, I had it up here. I think he recorded 382 plate appearances last season as a designated hitter and recorded 322, 416, 588 with 18 doubles, 22 homers, and 67 RBIs. So it's, if there's a red flag in his game, he did show swing and miss potential fanning 98 times. So if he was a two-way guy in the States, 
Uh, you'd make him a position player first. One of the scouts said, John Olerud, Ike Davis, guys like that. If they fail hitting, then we'll put him on the mound. So that's what would be going against the Giants in all this Did because of the— Somebody compared him to Ike Davis? Well, I guess Ike Davis— Well, these are guys that have pitched and hit in their oh. careers. Because Ike Davis— Well, maybe Ike Davis should have been a pitcher then. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. So we'll see. Shohei Otani. But we got till the uh, December 22nd is the deadline. So we may not find out until then. It might be a nice Christmas surprise. I think, I think there's about a 10% chance he goes to the Giants. There's a one in seven. It's a little bit higher than 10%. <laughs> no, because I think there's – I think – no, I think there's other teams that well, have a better chance of signing him. Well, the thing is uh, I, I was listening to the radio the other day when they were talking about this. Um, they brought up a good point that, you know, with the Giants being able to pitch first or, like, give them, a, you know, a sales pitch for the team. Um, that that's always helpful. Not only that, but they were saying like because of the area which we live in, the Bay Area, which is a big melting pot. It's a lot of a uh, good concentration of Asian American, you know, communities here. Mm-hmm. That it's a it's you know they can sell him like that he could be the like you just said the fa- the new face of the Giants. You know, so yeah. yeah. I mean, you gotta also think about the park too. So if he plans on pitching, the Giants ballpark makes a lot of sense. Yes. Um. The Padres ballpark makes a lot of sense. Cubs doesn't. Dodgers doesn't. Cubs doesn't. Mariners doesn't. Um, because I think I think the Mariners is a pretty live live stadium. Uh, Dodgers plays fair. Certain nights it, the ball's live. Certain nights it it dies out. Uh, Angels, I think their stadium plays relatively fair, and I think the Rangers stadium plays pretty fair, but. The Giants ballpark is absolutely a pitcher's ballpark. If he plans on trying to hit, you know, 30, 40, 50 home runs, then the Giants are pretty much out of the question. Right. Um, If he wants to have a really good pitching career, maybe the Giants are are where he goes. I don't I don't know. It really depends on what he. Well, it's interesting. I I don't I don't think he's going to be a. I don't think he's going to be a two way player. Yeah, I I don't think I I think he's going to end up. Whatever the team needs, he's going to end up being either a pitcher or he's going to be a position player. I don't see him being both. Yeah, well, I mean, in the National League, would he would get at bats. So that's kind of an interesting thing that's got to be running through his head, too. That if that, he's pitching, he's going to hit. That's if he is a pitcher. Yes. So I wanted to move on about the where you can find Otani now is in the Mega Boxes. So this will be a Japan base card. I think they call them the Mojo Silvers or the Mojo uh, Bowman's. I, we didn't break any of this because it is retail. It was at fourteen ninety nine at your local Walmart, Target, wherever. Um, there's not available pretty much there anymore, but you can find it on Blowout for about sixty bucks a box with the fourteen ninety nine price tag on it. So it sounds like Blowout got a hold of it through um, Beckett Marketing, which isn't Beckett uh, Grading. There's a company that sells retail cards called Beckett. I think it's Enterprises or something like that. So. Either they sold the rest of it to Bowman and DA or because I don't think Target or Walmart would have done that. So that's why you're seeing uh, this only on Blowout and DA car. Well, they probably got offered to it from to- uh, from Tops or probably Beckett Enterprises at, you know, $30 wholesale because it's gone up so much because of Otani. And now they're retailing it. So you wouldn't find it in um, and you can see the listing here on Blowout on the next slide. And uh, for $58. And if you go to the next slide, which we all know is our Walmart or Target display for cards, you won't find it there. More than likely, if you do, buy it right away at fourteen ninety nine. It's like giving yourself a free $40. That's, if that's you... also where you guys will find Prison Basketball site. Yeah, <laughs> it'll be gone, too. It'll be gone, too. But I also wanted to say, but you may find these next gentlemen um, finger-fucking packs through the, um, the aisles. These are known pack searchers. That uh, basically uh, so, rob away relics from uh, kids. So the hot packs that you guys see on eBay, these are the those guys that these are the guys that pick them out. There's a couple good. Look at this guy. This guy had no. He had no, the next one. He, he just had blatant disregard for anybody looking at him, being that his ass crack was hanging out as well while he was finger effing the packs. Hey. So yeah, underwear, everything. I think he's got his. I look like he's got his lunch there too. He's like, I'm gonna sit here, eat my burrito. Oh, they spend a lot of time in those aisles. And that's the problem. Target and Walmart, you know, they, their employees don't care. Well, the thing is that because, you know what, the the card, sports card section of Target, Target employees never deal with that section. So they, there's a separate person that comes in and stocks all of their cards. So they, they actually hire out. It's probably Beckett that comes and stocks these sections in Targets and Walmarts. It's not Target and Walmart that, that stocks these sections. Right. So they don't they could care less probably about what's going on. They in don't. Yeah, they don't sessions. care at all. That's why they'll do return on open boxes that people repack the packs. 
I think the next, I think the last slide I have on a pack searcher is actually somebody that did a video of a guy just uh, kind of hey. sitting there. Hey, put that pack down. So I advise any of you guys that are true hobbyists, if you catch these people, <laughs> you know, depending on their size, if it's like a Vin Diesel looking guy, maybe you don't want to say anything if you can't fight. But uh, I'd you punch know. that guy in the face. That guy, that guy <laughs> I might have a I'd, shot at that guy. I'd go up and be like, hey, man, want to squab? But look how he throws the packs back too. You see it. He like, he feels it. Damn it. Watch and he's doing, he's doing like a weird like bend as well. He like bends him. I don't know what the. Damn it. Your shorts are too long, bro. What does he think? This guy just have his phone out? Just like. I think it's incognito. Yeah, just incognito. So. Dude, yeah. it, I, this guy who's doing it, he needs to go get closer. Get in get his personal. Nah, you, you no, don't get, know. get in his personal space, man. Just get up there and be like, hey, you find anything good? Yeah. What do you got? <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that your gravity feeder? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe I want some, bro. Just like reach reach over his shoulder or in between his arm to like grab one of your all. Y'all let me get in there, man. I'm just push him out of the way. <laughs> man, we should go around and try to. Uh... No, what what they're doing, Tim, Tim is they, they feel for the relics. They feel around for relics. They bend them because there's dummy cards in them, too. So they'll bend them. And if they don't bend a certain way, they know there's a hit in there. So they basically spend two hours in there going through all the single packs and finding all the relics, two dollar relics and stuff like that, and then buy those. So it's it's shitty, is what it is. So if you ever see one of these guys, tell them just grab your packs and leave if you're gonna buy something. You know, you're keeping these. You know, there's kids that work, you know, or get a ten dollar allowance, and they're allowed to buy three packs, and now they're never gonna get a relic because they're gone because these guys have pack searched the crap out of these. So and then, and then what they do, and you've seen them on eBay. I think you already covered it, but you get you see people who are like. Uh, prestige football pack 14.99 guaranteed autograph autograph yep yep oh yeah it is excel marketing but i think the bigger company is beckett that does the retail it's beckett enterprises that bought out excel i think marketing. i think excel marketing does the they may they may do the stocking the like the merchandising yeah maybe. probably so we got court kings coming up there's three three teams left i think including the sixers so we got a couple more segments but let's fill up that court kings three teams left i wanted to talk some nfl and off the show at the nfl and the recent weird violence penalties that have been called i mean you start with you got the crab tree situation that we talked about last week take your helmet off bro i know then you got no um, leave it on man I know. And then you got, you know, what happened with Juju and Burfecht, which, you know, Steeler fans are probably extremely happy because Burfecht has the track record. I mean, you had just some crazy stuff happening that just seems like it was artificially, like, put in because the NFL needed ratings. And I'm not going to lie. It's been exciting with all this stuff. It's like everybody loves a train wreck. And, you know, Marcus Peters throwing the flag. The, uh, the Kansas City Chiefs had to um, – they had to do a, a goal line stand for about 15 plays, you know what and happen, uh, he got right? frustrated. You what? know what needs to happen? They need to bring in the second-tier referees again. I know. Dude, that'd be awesome. And allow fights. If it's a tie, they should just fight it out. Rob Gronkowski um, getting uh, getting his penalty, his frustration. Speaking of Marcus Peters, I guess the Chiefs, and you'll love this one, suspended him for one game, not the NFL. So they're playing the Raiders this weekend, but they're like, eh, let's just get rid of our best defensive player for the week. Woo! So... But um, it's 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 violence in the NFL is always going to happen. We've got we've got these guys that are just mammoth men out there that have are using all their testo testosterone on the on the field and they're going to blow up. So it's like all these, you know, oh, we got to keep the NFL safe and stuff like this. This is a contact combat sport. So it's just it's just weird with it's like uh, we have all these fights all of a sudden when the ratings were down, but now they're handing out penalties at the same time. And they're handing out suspensions, and it's just like whatever could be a new topic every day. We need five people suspended this week so we can talk about it. We need five, we need five fights so we can talk about it because the games themselves aren't good enough. They're getting better. Because it, of this. No, no. I mean, the, the quality of games are getting better because people are knowing which games to pay attention to and watch. The, the the cream is kind of rising when it, you can see which teams and which matchups are going to be good now. So you, it's easy to say when your team is eight when, and three. When your team nine, when you're a little nine, jaded. Nine, whatever. Nine thing. wins. Nine. No, it's not nine wins. Big difference between eight wins and nine wins. But yeah, yeah, it feels good. It feels good. Not gonna lie. I mean, during all this going down, this is what you know. Just grab your popcorn, dude, and and you got it. You got to get ready for it. 
No, that's a lot of popcorn. That's yeah. I wonder if you needed an extra ticket for that popcorn. I know. Seriously, how do you even <laughs> buy that much popcorn? Oh, I could get that much popcorn at the movies if you guys want. Really? I have a friend that works there. Just dump it all over your face. Yeah, he'll put it in a, a big bag like that for you. Hefty bag of you popcorn. Could, you can sit in your theater like that. <laughs> Guy's not getting a lot of it in his mouth though, but it's it's okay. It's a lot to eat there, bro. <laughs> hey man, I gotta sweep that up afterward. You better pick that up. Well, I know, right? <laughs> right. But I was alluding to the fact that uh, you, there's in a combat sport, there's going to be violence. So why do we why do we look down on this? That's my next segment is uh, why do we look down on the violence in the NFL? Or what are we trying to protect? Are we trying to protect the kids from seeing fights on TV? Or are we trying like where the NFL needs to find a happy medium? Are we going to be a violent game? Well, look, or are we going to worry about, about what we look like? How about this? How about the reason why there's these extra fights is because they they can't hit guys like they used to be able right. to. They can't like if you hit a guy, you're gonna get flagged. It's gonna be 15 yards. It's gonna right. be, it could change the game. Now they're just like it's they're they're holding it in. It's boiling over. And now they're just like, oh the hell with this. I'm just gonna I'm gonna fight. Let's fight. Well, you know how it is. I, I know how you play. Like let's let's use an example for basketball. I'll play I'll play football. You play basketball, right? I play basketball. And when somebody like comes down your foot or maybe throws the ball at you, you're gonna go harder, right? And you're going to be at the point where you're about to blow up if that guy does something else to you, right? Yeah. That's what happens with these guys on a daily basis and, you know, on a game-to-game basis is that there's somebody that's trying to get them angry. Yeah, well. And they're big physical specimen guys. They're going to get angry. They're prone guys, to getting angry. these guys are playing for a paycheck. So that adds yeah. even more onto it. I mean, this is their livelihood. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's past history. Juju and Vontae's perfect. Got all those dirty hits on the Steelers. He laid him out and he stood over him. Well, now we're like concerned on how it looks that somebody stood over a player. Well, we weren't concerned when Burfick was ripping people's heads off last week. Now we have concern that Juju was painting him back. I just, I just think like let them play. Let's hold the flags in. Let's just let it all happen. It's a violent sport. Hockey lets people fight. They let them. They don't even step in and try to break it up. Like let's just. So you're, so you're saying they should allow guys to just stop the game for a second. Take your helmet off. Yeah. And just go at it. That's why we're watching the game anyway for violence. Might as well see hey, full man, on violence. I, I like it. I like it. I mean, fans would be into it. Crowd would go crazy. It, it'd be good. They should have a Just let them square off. But we get to the like we get to the point where we're like we look at the human aspect of it. But the whole reason we're, we're watching football is to see somebody get their leg broken in half. That's why we're watching it, right? Same thing with MMA, on, stuff like that. This is true. But, but, but then you, you, you go like, oh, well, that's you, he was taunting him after he was on the ground. Now we have to like pull out our like empathy and feel like, oh, that's, 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 that's not right. Like, yeah, that's not right. But the we game is violent. We watch football, guys. Exactly. We don't, we, we don't want to see punts and kicks, right? We're watching for the big hit. We're talking about Khalil Mack getting, you know, sacking the quarterback or Terrell Suggs doing this and, you know, Odell Beckham making these crazy catches and, you know, Aaron Rodgers throwing the ball well, 50 what would yards. You, what and, would you rather see? A diving catch or a big hit? A big hit. Yeah, I think everybody – I think that's a consensus. I think everybody would rather see a big hit in football than a diving catch. So do you think the NFL, I mean, and I'm thinking is the NFL's tactics that they, they want to see the violence, so there seems like there's been no, more violence later, think, but then think, they can talk about the penalties you think there's and the suspensions a memo, afterwards. You think there's a memo going around going, hey, if you ever thought about getting into a fight with a, with a visiting team, this would be the week to do it. They're, they're, there's, that's not going on. No, there could be all the refs brought into a room and say, like, let's throw a bunch of extra flags to get the tensions going. Let's throw a flag on every play that because we could throw a flag on every play anyway. Yeah, but that, so let's that throw defeats, twenty more. That flags. defeats the purpose of the flow of the game. You don't like the last thing that that is actually what is destroying football right now is the fact that the game you you sit there and watch the game you see a big play and then there's always a flag. It goes back, so you're right. like, okay, well, what's the point of even watching it here? Like, I know. It just slows down the game. You can't really get invested. You can't really get invested in it because there's so many plays that are brought back with penalties. If anything, there should be less penalties. Yeah. You can call. I get it. In football, there's holding on every play. You can call a holding call on every single play, but that is terrible to watch. Yes, it, it's it makes it for it, it, it. That's why the ratings in football are down. 
is because there but is... But it gets your juices flowing. If you're a fan of that team and you just scored a touchdown and they call it back, you're like, oh, you know, you're like, oh, you know, it's like, it's it's drama. It's creating drama. Oh, dude. How many how many times do you see a, a big 30, like a, like a 30 yard play on a on a third down and it's an offensive holding and it comes back? You may be happy if your team was on defense because you're like, sweet, yeah. my team's defense sucks. They basically gave up a 30-yard play on a third down, but because there was a, 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 a hold that didn't even affect the, the play whatsoever, it's brought back. Right. I mean, I guess I guess you're happy if you're a team of the defense, but if you're on the offense, you're like, oh, the hell does this? I'm turning this off. But it's also... It's, like, I'm done. I'm it, done with it. Because it. now, it's, now it's basically third and 25 and and now that team does a draw play but it's also water cooler talk hey did you see that raider game man they got screwed man did you see the fishing well, that, that that's what that's every, that, 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 that's, that's what every talking about that's the what NFL. every raider game uh-huh. and every raider <laughs> fan so whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> well we're uh, running out of time here because we got court kings coming up but i wanted to ask you guys take tom brady out of the equation can't use tom brady as your answer who is the face of the NFL currently? Uh, face of the NFL? Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can't say Tom Brady. So who would be second? In a Aaron Rodgers. Right now he's hurt, though. Uh, it doesn't care. He has a lot of commercials. I was going to say Aaron, too. How about my, Russell Wilson? My biased no. answer is Derek Carr, but... Aaron, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> so when the game is not going on... And you're watching commercials. Aaron Rodgers. And who do you see more often? Actually, who do you see more often than anybody? Peyton Manning. Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Ro- Aaron Rodgers and Peyton Manning. Yeah. Um, why would you consider Tom Brady the face of face of football? Because he's the best. I I actually think Aaron Rodgers is the face of football, just based on the fact that you see his face so because, all the time. So basically, then we're saying that because Aaron Rodgers is hurt, the NFL is having a bad ratings this season. No, I when so when I think of football, and you want me to put a face to football, I put Aaron Rodgers. I could see that. Okay, Aaron Rodgers. Then who would be third? It would be third. If there was no Aaron Rodgers and no Tom Brady, who would be the face of the NFL right now? Roger Goodell. <laughs> <laughs> New contract, baby. Bill Belichick. I don't know. Jer- uh, Jerry Jones. Maybe Jerry Jones. Glory hole. But you can't. Can you name a receiver or a running back as a face of the NFL? Well, Elliot. Elliot earlier in the season when every single well, story was about him being suspended. They've done a good job of getting him out of being the face of the NFL. Uh, somebody in the chat, Odell Beckham. No. No, I mean, if he's, I would actually, he's also a guy who's hurt right now. I, I mean, Von Miller, when right after the Broncos won the Super Bowl, Von Miller was everywhere. He was those glasses, man. Those glass, dude. And but that was you see him and you see those glasses. You know exactly who he was. Antonio Brown. That's a good one. Antonio Brown. Um. Drew Brees does he fit into face of the NFL? Yeah, he does. He's 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 there. He he does commercials too, but he Aaron, does he Aaron did Rogers a he did a Nyquil commercial. <laughs> yeah, but I think he'd probably be fourth, maybe. I mean, what about Eli Manning? Not not I'm still not gonna say face, right. But no, I, I Eli Manning Eli Manning never got any commercials. But I will still say Thomas Brady over Aaron Rodgers overall. If you're talking yeah, about yeah, the face yeah. of the NFL, yeah. I mean, I think t- Tom Brady's consensus, but I'm like. Five six years from now, Aaron Rodgers and Brady's retired. I mean, Aaron Rodgers may be still no, playing. No, Aaron Rodgers still gonna be playing with Tom Brady. But T- Tom Brady will be retired. Who do we got next? So I mean, so who- during uh, it's funny that you brought this up. So during the Rams broadcast, I was I was watching the Rams game, and they and you'd be happy you'd be happy about this. They actually compared Jared Goff to Ryan Gosling. Nice. Finally, somebody realized the connection there, dude. They actually they said it, and I'm all wow. I'm like. But those guys, you know what? Uh, and, and maybe it's too too early for Jared it's, Goff. It's he, has, early. he has no personality. It's, it's too. It's, it's so boring. It's to too early. To. It's too early for Goff. It's too early for Wentz. But personality wise, you're right. They're actually both very similar. Yeah. They're they're not guys that are. I don't know. They're just. They, you don't. You don't. They, tune, they you go, see Jared they, Goff's having a press conference. You don't go like I'm going to stop and tune in. You're going to keep going with your life. You know who has good press conferences? Again, I'm a homer, but Sean McVay has good good yeah. press conferences. Yeah. 
Plus, he's a coach, and he's, he's like, like 33 or something. He's 30, you guys, you guys are crazy, dude. Carson Wentz got swag. <laughs> Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz isn't bad. Carson Wentz. Deshaun Watson could be in a couple years, I think. I mean, he's he, he's gonna he's gonna get his chances. And he looked great. How about um, Dak? No, no. Oh, how everything changes in one year. No, whack Prescott. I never was. I mean, I, I obviously thought he had a good season, but I, I never thought he was gonna be a face of the NFL. Yeah, he had a pretty good game this past weekend. I'm not trying to think of who else. Who else could be the face of the NFL? I mean, you may see old Baker Mayfield. How about, um, how Baker about- Mayfield may be a polarizing character coming out of college with the way he acts on the field. Um, people may be drawn to his interviews. Uh, he could, If he's good and he goes to the right team, he could take over as face of the NFL in a couple of years. Why is Larry Fitzgerald not the face of the NFL and never was? Sure. Like, what... what- he does he does everything the right way. Great yeah. work ethic, doesn't get in trouble, just goes about his business, puts he up numbers, be. and gets no recognition. Is it because he plays for the Arizona Cardinals? Nice guys finish last. Yep. Is it exactly. is it but if he what if what if Fitzgerald played his whole career with the Cowboys? He'd be Michael Irving. He'd be Des Bryant. But even Michael Irving feel like he has more of a bad boy personality. Than yeah, Michael Larry Irving did some bad things, and Des Bryant yeah. runs his mouth. Larry Fitzgerald just plays the game the right way. He does. He's um, great. Solid, too. Every year I'm like, I can't draft this guy on fantasy, and then every year 1,000 yards. Like, it. damn it. Yep. It's too old. No, he's not. He's killing it. He's got a great work ethic. He's got the uh, Jerry Rice work ethic. But we'll continue uh talk on NFL. Jerry Rice um, on the Raiders. Uh, I know, right. No, Seahawks. Um, we'll continue talking about the NFL. We got preferred today, so check that out. Um, I also wanted to get you guys' first – before we let before we go, last little topic here. I want to start – I'll start with Dan. I'm putting you on the spot, so get, get ready for this. Super Bowl. What's the matchup? What's your prediction? Who's playing in the Super Bowl? It's going to be wildly different from the beginning of the year. This year? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. I'm, I'm first, huh? Yep. yep. Remember what you said at the beginning of the season? I don't remember what we said at the beginning of the season. I'll have to go back and archive that. You one. know, okay, I'm gonna start with I'm gonna start with the AFC. And um I think this team is on fire right now. Uh I'm gonna go Pittsburgh in the AFC because they uh they're firing right now. And I know they lost their starting linebacker, Shazier, which could be a problem, but that offense phenomenal. I think they can beat I think they can beat New England. Um damn. In the uh, in the in the NFC, it's tough because obviously I'm a homer. I want to go. I want to go Rams, but I don't think the Rams are quite there yet. I also don't think the Eagles are there yet, and I don't think the Vikings are going to be able to ride Case Keenum into the in, in, through the playoffs. Did, didn't you? You, you said, you said my either pick you said either Panthers or Falcons right before the season started. I yeah yeah, but uh, and you guys in the chat. Let's see see um, your guys' pick. Uh, this is this this is gonna pain. This pains me to say that I'm gonna go Seattle. Ooh, that was my pick. So I'm um, I'm gonna say it's gonna be Steelers and the Seahawks and the uh, and the Super Bowl. C Rad. Uh, I'm gonna go Eagles in the NFC, and then I'll go Patriots. Yeah, it's hard to not go with the Patriots, but you know me. I go for the long bomb Hail Marys. I am going to go Seahawks versus the Chargers. Oh, God. Of course you are. Oh, God. Of course you are. Jesus. Oh, my God. First of all, they're not going to even get in there because the Raiders are going to win the NFC West. Dude, you yeah, guys barely beat the Giants. Dude. Dude, yeah, we're all tied. Got, first, you got to make it to the playoffs. They're, they're, playoffs. They're, they're in first place. They're tied for first place. They're six and six. There's three of us tied for first place. Everybody everybody can't make but it. But you guys got to remember, the Chargers lost their first four games. They were 0-4. They're six and six now. They have the momentum going. And they've got, I mean, Joey Bosa is an absolute just phenomenal sack artist. And so is Melvin Melvin how, Ingram. How are they going to make the playoffs if they don't play a home game? Exactly. They no. know how to win on the road all year long. Well, because they've had no choice. Exactly, and they adapted from that. And then, they, I, and then they're playing at a stadium that holds like 800 people. It's like a high school stadium. Dude, I'm telling you, they've got all the pieces of the puzzle of stay healthy. I mean, they've got – Phillip Rivers has paid his dues. He's – 
probably a borderline Hall of Famer. I know he hasn't you won know what? anything. Nobody, big. nobody wants to see Philip Rivers sit there and complain and pout in the playoffs. Yes, they do. Except for you. Yes, they do. That, that's you're the only one. L.A. Chargers, baby. So I'll let you guys uh, think on that and complain about my pick throughout the day. Uh, but we'll see you guys live on the feed shortly. Give us about five minutes to uh, pull everything down from the show and get ready to break. Court Kings. We got Bowman Draft, Court Kings, Preferred Football, and um, all new releases. Today. All new releases for the rest of the evening. So we'll be your Huckleberries. Hang out in the feed on YouTube and Ustream. And uh, thanks for tuning in to the hype. Peace out. Peace, guys. <laughs> mm-hmm.